And so it'd be helpful uh, to, I think for us and, and for everyone here, to get a bit of an overview or a rundown of what kind of sensor applications are being used. Um, so I'm gonna turn to you, uh, Leo. Um, would you kind of give us a, a rundown of some of those sensor applications that are being used uh, for water infrastructure and transportation, at least to start with? And how much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> a minute. Okay. So uh, first, let's 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 talk water. It's a fluid, of course, and you want to measure it as vo volumetrically as possible. So now there are sensors that can be deployed on ro robotic fish. So rather than getting point solutions every so far apart, you can continuously m monitor the, the 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 water and look for the molecules that that, that don't die and so forth. Um, in terms of bridges, we have uh, sensors that we can embed in the bridges and in roads that do not require power. They'll be there 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And they tell you a lot about stress and strain going on. And from that, you can infer the health state of, uh, uh, of infrastructure. I think one, one of the most exciting uh, type of sensors being deployed to today in Michigan is really coming from the vehicles themselves. You know, the, te the technology that the Detroit Three have been putting into cars to enable mobility, to enable a more comfortable ride and so forth, also are sensors. They weren't necessarily built that way, but they can be built away when you've got the connectivity. So I'm driving my car, the um, uh, sem se semi-active suspension system, uh, I'm too cheap to buy that good of a car, but um, <laughs> I, I'm, as, as I'm driving around in it, uh, that that same device that makes the ride smoother is a sensor. It will tell you the road state. And now if we offload that data from the vehicle via a comm link to MDOT, now we can start putting a map together of what the current state of our roads are and just be a lot more proactive. And perhaps even in finance, you can start working new models of how to keep our, our infrastructure going because you, you've essentially have people deploying the sensors. Each one of us carries a sensor with us. I've even seen people with four. If you have four cell phones on you, you've got four <laughs> sensors, right? And we can use that data to improve our, our, our infrastructure. And, and it's an incredibly inexpensive way for the state to do it because the consumer is bearing most of the cost of bringing that sensor around. And so this is really an exciting time. The Internet of Things makes it ubiquitous sensing possible. I just, uh, just wanted to add um, another uh, concept that uh, I would love to see added to the uh, diagram that we had up there of the different infrastructure circles that were intersecting and so on, the Venn diagram there. Um, I'm not sure whether it would be overlaid or another circle, but, but the whole health um, and uh, you know, infrastructure, we're talking about infrastructure health as well as many other aspects of infrastructure, but then human health and uh, environmental health and so on. So, so the sensors that we talk about, you know, we, th certainly there are many sensors out to um, help us with asset management, with infrastructure, and to determine the health of the infrastructure and so on. But Obviously, there's tons going on regarding um, wearable sensors for human health and the relationship between our infrastructure and the health of citizens uh, in different places and so on. I think that's a very important connection that is obvious, but we all need to make, and I think it's also a connection that can help with some of the finance issues. Because in terms of going after financing, one thing that I found is that a lot of times people aren't too interested to hear about gray or green infrastructure. But when you start telling them about the impacts of poor infrastructure and the health impacts, that's when you start to get some real um, buy-in and some real understanding. Uh, so just uh, one point that I wanted to make regarding the health and keeping that in there. I'm just going to weigh in that I am excited about green and gray infrastructure. So, <laughs> so just quickly going back to my earlier point on um, not just isolating a singular type of infrastructure um, as it relates to sensors, thinking about things like the LED street lights in Detroit, the sensors that could or may be attached to those 
to study things like air quality in some of our hardest impacted communities, as well as supporting an autonomous future. Um, these may require new um, partnerships, like I was saying before. Um, so I, I'm not ignoring, I'm not going to get technical, that's your job. Um, but I, I do think that um, bringing more folks to the table to support these sort of P3 opportunities is important. Yeah, I wanted to amplify what uh, Carol said before, I guess, on the financial value. I mean, if you think about it, sort of sensors, whatever sensors they are, whether they're in roads, in water systems, in energy systems, uh, in, in, in water systems or whatnot, they are... They make up the they make the difference between a cost of infrastructure and value of infrastructure, and Dennis brought that up earlier too. So the whole value of infrastructure is really the, the informational efficiencies, I guess, that get unlocked from 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 infrastructure by sensors, and that that piece of the whole digital asset, the digitalization of infrastructure, is really where the attractiveness is, I guess, for new folks, I mean, be they P3s or others, to sort of come into infrastructure, because that makes it different from what infrastructure was 20 and or even 10 years ago. 